Hey guys, so I'm finally back. I know it's been forever. I have been working on projects in my home and this is one that I'm 99, no, let me just say 95% done with. There is still one part that I have to do on this beautiful oversized armchair. Um, I actually have two of them. I thrifted them. I got the set for $65, I believe it was. Okay, so um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is just get into it. I'm going to strip it down, say hi to Lucy. Remember Lucy from my very first couch video when she was a puppy? Look at her now. Anyways, these are the tools you're going to need. Needle nose, needle, needle nose plier, okay, a staple remover. You can get these in Walmart or you can go to a craft store, okay, and a box cutter, all right? These little things are going to help you out a lot, I promise. That works. Oh, also you're gonna, you're gonna need a drill because the base of this chair is attached to the part where you actually put your butt, okay? So I'm gonna rip out the old lining. I'm not keeping any of the original fabric because this couch had a good amount of dust on it and it's super old. So I'm taking off all of the fabric, not going over anything old you know, that was already there. So all of this is being trashed, but I am going to keep the fabric on the actual part of the couch where there's upholstery fabric. I'm going to use that to create new patterns in fabric to recover this, um, did I say couch? This chair. All right. My fabric is from E Luxury Supply. I am hope you guys can see that box right there. That's where I got my fabric from. They always have sales and coupon codes and I got some really, really, good heavy duty pet friendly pet resistant fabric from them and so far so good you guys I don't even need a vacuum to clean this fabric like I literally wet a washcloth or a paper towel and I rub the fabric and all the pet hair comes off if there's any on it super super easy to take care of so I just wanted you to, to know that I'll have the information to their website down below in the description box okay so as you guys can see I'm just taking out the screws that's holding the legs on to the chair and I'm gonna take that off these legs are super super heavy they're solid wood beautiful work on them but I'm I wanted to keep them the way they were stained but then I decided to go ahead and change the color so that's gonna be in part two of this video this part of the video is mostly the stripping down of the fabric and taking it off. I've gotten a lot of comments, emails, and DMs on Instagram on how to strip a chair or a couch down to its studs. So in this video, you're pretty much going to see the entire process. So if you have a couch or a chair with this front part, it usually just pops off with no problem. And you can use your needle nose pliers to kind of get in between the area and just pop it out. And then this part is basically the piping um, that's covered in upholstery fabric. I just use my needle nose plier to kind of get it in there and pull it out. Okay, and then go in with your staple remover and use that and try to get out staples, okay? The needle nose plier also comes in handy to get out those staples that maybe break or won't come out and you can just hold on to it, twist it, and just take it out. And as you guys can see, I'm just shoving it in there and easily getting this part off, okay? We're going to keep that part, okay? This is the part that covers the front arm part of the chair there's two parts so we're gonna keep that we will remove the fabric we're not keeping any of the original fabric in my old video I did cover some old fabric just because that couch was never used it was just ugly fabric in my opinion it's my couch if I think it's ugly it's ugly some people were highly offended by me calling the couch ugly but that's just what it is this fabric is ugly too it, it looks like vomit so just not my taste so we're going to do a more updated color, something a little bit more neutral and not so busy. And this is a little trick that I figured out. If you guys could see the needle nose plier, I'm kind of twisting it to get the um, strip off of there. And that really, really helped. And now I'm going to go in with my staple remover to pop off the rest of the staples because the front pad was attached to the bottom of the chair and then the piping was stapled on top of it. So I had to kind of 
take that off first then then take off the front part of it okay so here I am just removing the staples using the staple remover it's very easy you just slide it under the staple and pop it up I'm gonna slow the video down so you can get a closer look it's really not that hard to do anybody could do it just take your time if you're having a hard time try angling the staple remover down pushing down and then gli like gliding it under the um, staple and then pulling back that should help okay um, there are some staples that are very stubborn so just take your time and have patience and there's mr. Jack as always he's grown up quite a bit since my last upholstery video my first and well this is my second one all right but yeah he's he's always in the mix anything I'm doing he needs to be there he needs to supervise because he thinks he's my boss I guess like all cats do all right also get yourself some work gloves so you don't get you know pricked by staples or splinters because I did get a splinter from that um, wood there okay so this is the back part of the chair and chairs that are shaped like this usually oh by the way keep that that is what holds the middle part of the fabric onto the um the piece of wood there okay but anyways like i was saying um chairs that are shaped like this when they have a curved back even square ones usually have cardboard holding holding the shape Okay, so we're going to keep the cardboard. We're going to keep the batting because it's in really good shape. You don't have to replace it. If yours is in good shape, don't have to replace it. But if it's like yellow and dingy looking or rotting or whatever, definitely cut a new piece and cover up that cardboard. So this is the back and then the sides. And I put all of those to the side because I will be reusing them. So you have to take apart the chair in steps. I suggest starting with the front part of the arms and then starting on the bottom, working your way up. Hi, Jack. Say hi. Hi, since you want to be all in the way. Okay. <laughs> all right. Then I went in with my vacuum cleaner because once I got the back part of the fabric off, a whole bunch of dust came out of there. So I was vacuuming that out, taking it out, and this is the chair down to the studs. Now we're going to need some protective eyewear. I got these from the dollar store, so you have no excuse to not get you some eyewear okay these are the staples that I'm using and the staple gun that I'm using is from Walmart okay so you can get a staple gun pretty much anywhere hardware store craft store wherever um, also I took a few days to do this so you will see my clothes change and yes I did my hair I don't pay to do my hair I do it myself and um, I decided to get new um, batting okay for the um, chair just to redo it and cover it over just so I can have like a nice fresh base to work with even though there was nothing wrong with the batting that was already on there I just wanted to put a new layer on there just to kind of you know freshen it up a bit just a little bit okay oh also kind of spray your couch or whatever it is that you're working on with some Lysol just in case just in case and let it air out okay Um, the batting I did get from Walmart, and I believe it was $1.99 um, per yard. I could be mistaken. It could be cheaper where you live. But, um, yeah, if you can get it for cheap, that would be great. Try not to overpay for this stuff, okay? So, basically, what I'm doing, once I have it stapled down to the back part of that curve, I'm going to try and smooth it out with my hand, just gently pulling it. You don't want to pull it too hard, or else it will rip and get a hole in it because it's basically like um like a fiber okay and it's very very delicate so you want to take your time with it it looks like it can be ripped but it, it's really delicate so take your time and gently pull to smooth it out any excess cut it off all right so as you can see i folded it over well under and stapled it in place you don't need to put a lot of staples because you're going to go over these areas again when you put on your new fabric okay so just cut off any excess just staple this enough just to hold it in place and to get it nice and tight but not you know tight to the point where it's ripping you want it tight where it's smooth but not ripping okay remember that don't pull too hard all right so here you'll get a better look at how I do it 
And if you can get an electric staple gun, that's awesome. Um, I don't know. Electric staple guns and nail guns freak me out. I still have to get over that fear and hopefully I can get over it soon because I have so many projects in this house that requ require nails and uh, like the hammer is just not going to be doing it for me. So I'm going to get over my fear one of these days. If you guys have any suggestions on staple nail guns or that you want me to try that are, you, you know, not scary list them down below okay i do know there are some men on this channel that watch me thank you guys for your support if you know of a nail gun that's not scary that's you know lady friendly let me know okay okay all right also be careful stapling upward like this make sure you're actually going into you know wood and not going past wood where it flies through the fabric and hits you in the face and make sure you have on your eye protection. Don't forget it, okay? Don't. So here I'm gonna put on my first piece of fabric, which is going to be the front right here. I'm going to do some hand stitching and I'm going to do the stitching a little bit, um, I would say in reverse, if this makes sense. Okay, so this way I can have that seamless look. So I'm using a very long upholstery needle to do this. You can find these in the dollar store. I believe this is where I got this pack of needles from. It had like 20 needles in it and a super huge one so this is what I'm using and some nylon thread use any thread you have available the thread is gray so it can match the fabric so as you guys could see I'm going from underneath up and under up and under up and under so that I don't have a seam on the top and I'm trying my best to go all the way into that corner underneath that arm so when I pull it over this is how it looks well, I was about to show you how it looked, but then I decided to go to the other side. So just, just give me a second, okay? Give me a second. So that's how it looks, okay? So you guys could see it looks really nice and clean and seamless, and you can see where I stitched. So I went over this about three times to make sure it was secure because, you know, from sitting in it and the dog and people and the heavy people and multiple people all at once, I don't want this popping open, okay? So I did go over it about three to four times. So this is how it looks. I also pulled on it to make sure it was strong. This big roll of fabric I got from eLuxury Supply. Um, it is over 30 yards, okay? So if you need a lot of fabric, definitely check them out. They will order it for you if they don't have all of it. So they were really good with that and got me all the fabric. This piece of fabric is from one of the... Um, the this is from the back part of the chair okay so if you look at the chair there's three panels the middle and the two sides this is one of the sides so I'm going to use the pattern to cut out the same exact pattern because it has a curve to it and you want to go with the curve the original pattern of what the chair has you can't you kind of don't want to freehand this yourself because you might end up wasting a lot of fabric so try to keep your patterns so you can use those you know keep an extra maybe inch or two extra fabric on there so that you can you know have enough pulling room okay this fabric from e-luxury supply is not stretchy but I did realize if you put it in a warm room it makes the fabric relax I was actually in a cold room if you could tell I have a sweater on okay so or if you're doing your couch in a warm room it's easier to kind of manipulate and pull this fabric so that's the pattern that I just cut out and I cut it the exact same way um, it was on the chair even from the cuts in the bottom okay this is the middle part so we're gonna put that on too just to see how it looks I cut this one a bit more perfect to size, but I did leave a little bit extra on the bottom. So that's how this one looks. So what you're going to do now is get all three of your pieces together. If you have a couch like mine or a chair like mine, put them all together and pin them together by the seams. Okay, make sure you have your sides right. You don't want to accidentally pin and sew the wrong side. So I'm going to put them together and pin them together and then I'll sew them together. The machine that I'm using is a very affordable brother machine. I believe I paid like $79 for this thing in Walmart. If you can find a different store to shop at besides Walmart, go right ahead. I know a lot of people don't like Walmart. So if you can find another business, go right ahead or check online. All right, you guys. So I start stitching. I do a double stitch. I go all the way down and then I go over that same stitch again. I do take out the pins and check 
on my seam to see how it looks. So if you've never, you know, used a sewing machine or anything or stitched anything and you know somebody that does, have them help you. Or practice on a couple pieces of scrap fabric before you attempt to do this, okay? Definitely watch your fingers. It is going to be a little bit tricky trying to sew around those curves without the fabric bunching up. So just, you know, have some patience and take your time. So this is my seam and I did a double stitch. And this is pretty much how it looks from, I guess, a distance of me sewing these pieces together. So this is the other side, the other panel to the three piece three pieces that come together to form the back panel of this armchair. Since it's a very rounded curved shape, the panels do have a curve to them. They are also cut in a curve so that they can, you know, fit that shape. Okay. You definitely don't want to make straight cuts because it's going to be a little bit hard for you to smooth that out. So the wider side is going to go over the arm area or the, the headrest area. And make sure you mark your panels. If you, you know, get confused, just mark them just so that, you know, you can keep track of where certain panels are before you start stitching. So here I'm just putting it on, just trying to see how it looks. Okay. And also here's a big tip. While you take off the fabric, I completely forgot to say this to you. While you take the fabric off of your armchair, your couch, whatever it is that you're working on, take pictures of how it was installed. You will need to use these later. Okay. Especially if you've never done this before, you want to try to put the fabric, the new fabric back on pretty much the same way the previous installer, you know, put it on. So definitely take pictures while you're taking fabric off, take pictures of certain areas where you feel like you're going to forget, take pictures of how it was installed, of how the staples were, of where it was stapled, how much was stapled in a certain area, how the fabric was pulled in a certain area. This will help you out a lot. I promise you it will. Because I went back and checked my phone for reference pictures of how the fabric was pulled in certain areas, especially here in the back. It really helped a lot. So I went back to my reference pictures to see exactly where the fabric was pulled, where it was stapled. So this is going to, you know, bring it closer to where the original person who upholstered this chair stapled the piece of the first piece of fabric that I took off. Okay. So this will be my middle part. This is in the center part of the headrest, I guess, part of the chair or the arm part of the chair. Cause it's one big arm curved thing. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you call it. I call it a headrest, but I'm sure somebody else would call it something else. Okay. But try not to staple too much. Okay. These are just, these are just, um, Let's call them preview staples because you may have to take them out and re-smooth the area. So don't put a whole bunch of staples right away and go back and forth and check and make sure things are coming out smoothly. And another thing, you guys, you don't have to finish this project. If you're starting a couch, you don't have to finish it in one day. Take you know, your time, do this in a room where it's away from people. If you don't want them to see, I actually did this in what I call my fireplace room. It's the only room in the house with a fireplace. I actually did a video on how I redid my fireplace. Um, and my house is pretty much like an ongoing project everywhere. So I really don't care if my projects are out, but you know, if you don't want people asking you questions or bothering you about your projects, you know, do it in a room somewhere where you can just kind of lock it up, take a minute from it and then go back to it fresh because it can get super overwhelming to start a project like this if you've never done it before and then trying to finish it. Don't try to finish it in one day. Just take your time. I promise you it will be better that way. Okay. I did take my time and do this. It took me about three days to do both chairs. Okay. If I add all the time together, the first chair did take a while, um, to, get all the fabric off because I've never done a armchair like this before. So I did the first chair first so I can see exactly what it was that I was up against. Okay. So that would be the best thing to do. If you have two of these, do one first to see exactly what it is that you're going to have to deal with. If you only have one, definitely take a deep breath, breathe, 
take those reference pic reference pictures and you'll be all right as you guys can see I'm smoothing the fabric as I go and stapling this in place once I have you know figured out where exactly I want my staples to be and I'm happy with them I feel secure on where I've placed them then I give them an extra couple of staples okay so here I'm gonna cut the fabric and this is going to slowly well not slowly this is going to wrap around this area right here because when you put on the um, front part the cover of the arm it's going to cover this cut you won't be able to see it okay so certain cuts you're going to have to make so this is why I'm telling you to take pictures of things okay in areas where you may have to cut staple a certain way fold fabric over a certain way so it can be nice and seamless and remember breathe take your time you can do it okay you don't have to get it all done in one day you don't have to get this all done in two hours three hours 24 hours just take your time do one step at a time one day you strip it down to the studs the next day you put on the new batting the next day you cut on your patterns the next day you stitch them together whatever makes it easier and less stressful for you okay so here you guys can see I did my first staple pulling that fabric around to the front and this is where I'm gonna start um, folding my fabric to create those little they're like they're like little pleats that's what I want to call them okay so here's where I'm gonna fold them over and I'm going to fold inward and then over and staple once just in case I have to take it apart and redo it okay once I'm satisfied with how it looks then I'll give it one one or two more staples okay also take a picture of this when you are completely done so you can use that as a reference picture to make sure you fold over enough times on the other side so you have the same amount of folds in the same direction on the other side so I have some going up and I have some folding inward so some folding up and some folding inward so hopefully you can see that okay also make sure you try to pull on the fabric and staple down so here I'm gonna start pulling and then just stapling as I go the electric staple will definitely make this much easier for you but I'm still trying to get over that fear so just bear with me okay at first when I put these um, first couple of staples in here I realized that it just wasn't laying flat so I took those staples out I was about to kind of rush it and rip it out, but then I was like, I don't want to rip my fabric. So I just took my time and got it out of there with the pliers and the tweezer, the not tweezer, staple remover. Just to readjust this area to get it exactly how I want it to be. Okay. So if you make a little mistake, it's okay to take the staple out and restart. If it doesn't look good, it's okay to take it out. So. I put in two I should have just put in one and looked at it but I think I, the reason why I put in two was to see how it would look because I did do this a while I'm literally doing the voiceover today July 9th and I filmed this I feel ashamed to say this about two three months ago okay so I'm sorry it took this long to put this out for you guys but I am a busy person you know I have three kids and school and School was closing and, you know, all the stuff that goes with being a mom. And I also run two other YouTube channels, one of which I'm also neglecting my cooking channel. I will be getting back to that soon. And then my main channel, which is actually beauty related, believe it or not. I, I could look kind of, I could look kind of decent when I want to be. Okay, but let, we're not talking about that right now. Okay. <laughs> all right. So... I went in and pulled this piece of fabric inward and stapled it just to make it a bit smoother for me because it just wasn't acting right. So I also went back and cut the fabric again because I was off by about an inch. So I stapled that part on the inside of the arm to keep it nice and tight. And then I went back and stapled my piece of fabric and got it the exact way I wanted it to be. All right, so now I had a little issue here with this piece of um, batting that I put here um, it wasn't going down as smoothly as I would like the seams weren't matching up correctly so I just went in and kind of stapled this part down to flatten it I had to kind of like tuck 
in there the piece of fabric and then go over it and see if this would work and make it look better because I definitely didn't want it to look forced if you know what I mean so then I tried folding over the batting just a bit more and they seem to look a bit better than before I didn't want to cut it out completely or else it would look off once the entire thing was stapled down So this looked better to me and then this is the part where I stapled it on to the chair's frame. And then I'm just going to go ahead and staple it down or onto the rest of the chair's frame um, all the way to the end. Okay, well not all the way but most of the way until I have the other way folded in just like this side. Okay. But yeah, you guys, we're nearing the end of part one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helped a lot. If you are curious about, you know, stripping a um, chair down to the studs and to its frame, I hope this video was helpful and I hope I explained it in a way for you to understand. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification, and yeah, I'll see you next time in about a week. I love you guys.